thank you for your introduction. And first, I'd like to thank the organizers for giving, giving me the opportunity to talk in this workshop. And today, I will talk about the existence of complete thermodynamic potentials for quantum systems. So this is based on so-called resource theoretic approach. And a resource theory is a kind of a branch of quantum information theory. So this is a kind of quantum information-based approach to thermodynamics. So in that sense, this is a this is slightly different approach to thermodynamics from other talks of this workshop, I guess. But I will try to <laughs> present some basic ideas of this approach in this talk. Okay, so this is the outline of my talk. I will talk about uh, two of our recent, recent results about uh, the resource theoretic approach to thermodynamics. One is um, about quantum thermodynamics of interacting quantum many body systems. So this is about a macroscopic quantum system and we, are, we consider macroscopic quantum thermodynamics. And the other part is about quantum thermodynamics of um, in the presence of a concept so-called catalyst. So catalyst is a kind of additional system that is attached to a quantum system and catalyst itself doesn't change before and after thermodynamic operation. So we consider some quantum thermodynamics aspect um, about catalyst in, the, in this second part. And this talk is based on these three papers. Okay, so let me start with an um, uh, introduction to this subject. So a very general background of this talk is thermodynamics. So an important characteristic of conventional equilibrium thermodynamics is that entropy or the free energy provides the complete characterization of state compatibility between macroscopic equilibrium states. Here, complete means that uh, the state conversion can be characterized in a necessary and sufficient manner by a entropy function or the free energy function. So we can say that a state thermodynamic conversion is possible if and only if the entropy increases or the work is greater than the free energy difference. So <laughs> this necessary and sufficient condition is actually a very strong property in conventional equilibrium thermodynamics. And it has been characterized in a mathematically rigorous manner in this paper, for example. So in this paper, they considered um, axiomatic formation of thermodynamics and they established uh, the mathematical properties of this uh, complete characterization of set compatibility. But such a good, nice property of equilibrium thermodynamics is restricted to macroscopic and classical and uh, equilibrium thermodynamics. So a natural question is that does such a complete thermodynamic potential exist in out of equilibrium and fully quantum situations? So this is the question that I want to rather address in this talk. Okay, so uh, next let me focus on some modern approaches to thermodynamics. So recently, uh, thermodynamics of small systems uh, has attracted much attention um, because there are many experimental platforms for small scale thermodynamics. For example, this is a biomolecule, something like RNA molecule. And <laughs> this single molecule can behave as a small scale thermodynamic range. So for example, we can stretch a single RNA, RNA molecule and it has uh, entropic force. And it's a kind of parallel to the conventional rubber stretching experiment. So from such a small scale experiment, we can measure the work and the free energy at the level of single molecule. So this is an interesting point of this kind of uh, small scale thermodynamics. And also we have several interesting quantum platforms. For example, we have trapped ions, or superconducting qubits, and single electrons, or NMR. So in these systems, we can observe the effect of quantum fluctuations, as well as summer fluctuations. So these systems are very good platform to investigate quantum thermodynamics. 
And there are also several theoretical approaches to uh, this kind of small scale thermodynamics, especially quantum thermodynamics. So one approach is called stochastic thermodynamics, or as, uh, as a subfield, we can say that thermodynamics is very closely related to information. And this kind of approach is based on um, statistical physics rather than information theory or quantum information theory. So this is a very standard approach to investigate this, this kind of systems. For example, um, fluctuation theorems and some dynamic uh, uncertainty relations are very in, important topics of this approach. But in this talk, I will focus on the other approach, so-called resource theory of some dynamics. So this is relatively new field and <laughs> Originally, this uh, has been investigated in the community of quantum information. So rather than the, the community of uh, statistical physics. So, so this resource theory is a kind of very mathematical field. And we have a lot of tools, mathematical tools to investigate quantum information theory. And we can directly approach such quantum information tools to some dynamics. So that is the main idea of this resource theory of some dynamics. Also, there are several conceptual differences between these two approaches. So today, uh, I would try to <laughs> clarify what is the main idea of resource theory of some dynamics. And also, let me just advertise my recent book. So I've written a book about resource theory of classical and quantum thermodynamics and title is Entropy Divergence and Materialization in Classical and Quantum Thermodynamics. So this is a very, very big title, but it's a one of Springer Brief series. So it's just uh, 150 pages or like that. And you can see, you can find the uh, early manuscript in this archive now. So this will be published, I think, next month. And there is already an Amazon web page, so you can click the button. OK, so anyway, so today, <laughs> let me start with what, what is resource theory? So this is an information theoretic framework to quantify useful resources. So and it is crucial to identify what are uh, free states and free operations in these approaches. So for example, a standard resource theory in quantum information community is the resource theory of entanglement. So entanglement is a kind of uh, most important resource in quantum information theory. So by using entanglement, we can do a lot of important information theoretic tasks. So in this case, resource is, an ent is entanglement and free states are separable states that don't have any entanglement and the free operations are called local operation and classical communication that does not increase uh, the entropy between these two parties. And so this was originally established in quantum information theory. And now I will focus on <laughs> resource theory of some dynamics. So in this case, resource is work or the free energy, and free states are given states or summary equilibrium states. And free operations are just relaxation processes. So free states are states that we can prepare without any cost. So give state, we can suppose that in some dynamics, we can prepare give states without any cost because by just waiting the relaxation, waiting for the relaxation, we get the give states. And free operations also are operations that we don't need any additional cost. So that is just relaxation processes in some dynamics. And <laughs> maybe it is interesting to see um, fundamental relationship between resource theory of entanglement and resource theory of some dynamics. So they are apparently very different because this is a class, this is a quantum resource and some dynamics is some dynamics. But if we look at one of two systems, of an entangled quantum system, then it, it is a completely mixed state. So that is a maximum, and uh, that is a, that has a maximum von Neumann entropy. So in that sense, the resource theory of entanglement is almost equivalent to the resource theory of some dynamics at infinite temperature. 
because we have we, we, because if we look at one of these two systems, we have the infinite temperature thermodynamic system here. So there is a slight difference, but basically they have a very similar uh, mathematical structures. So in some sense, resource theory of thermodynamics is a finite temperature extension generalization of resource theory of entanglement. So this is the original idea why we why resource theory is useful for thermodynamics. And so there are many resource theories, and I will skip this. And okay, so then uh, I will focus on resource theory of thermodynamics. So the basic setup is that we have a system. This is a quantum system, and we have a heat bus that is attached to that system. And the entire time revolution is given by unitary pressure. And if we trace out the heat bus, then the dynamics of the system itself is given by uh, some non-unitary evolution that is called a CPTP map in quantum information theory. And this is a very general non-unitary, I mean, dispersive dynamics. Um, but in some, dy some dynamics, we focus on a particular class of CPTP maps. So one is called Gibbs preserving map that is defined as follows. So this row Z is um, the Gibbs state and the Gibbs preserving map doesn't change this Gibbs state. This means that, uh, for example, we uh, prepare prepared thermal equilibrium state and we just wait for the relaxation and then the Gibbs state doesn't change. So this means that uh, this is a very natural requirement for thermodynamics because the given state should, should not change under any free operation, I mean, the relaxation process. And also there is a slightly different concept called thermal operation. In this setup, the heat bus is in the, it's given by the given state and the entire operation conserves the total energy of the system on the bus. This more clearly shows the concept of the resource theory is that energy is the resource because it is always conserved by this unitary operation. So these two formulations are very close to each other, but there is a slight difference. For example, by the Gibbs preserving map, we can create is a quantum coherence, but in some operations, we cannot create quantum coherence. But anyway, so we Basically, we will focus on the Gibbs preserving map or sometimes some operations from now. Okay, so and then we introduce the concept of work in resource theory of thermodynamics. So we consider, for example, a single molecule gas like this. And if you expand this, so we can extract, for example, KT of two of work, and this weight is pushed up from here to here. So in stochastic thermodynamics, we allow some fluctuations in the work distribution, but in the resource theory approach, so we suppose that the work is not fluctuating quantity. So this is a kind of a special assumption, but in some sense, this is a very natural assumption because work is a mechanical quantity. So it is natural to suppose that the work, work stretch itself doesn't have any entropy contribution to the system. So in this case, uh, the work is always given by double with probability one. So this is a central assumption of resource theory of thermodynamics. So in, in other words, so the, uh, the initial state is, if the initial state of the weight is given by zero, this is a pure state. The final state is always given by another pure state double. So this, under this assumption, we have some exotic second row of thermodynamics. So in standard second row formulation, we have the quantum relative entropy or the Kalbach Leibler divergence, KL divergence as a thermodynamic uh, potential. But under this uh, assumption, this is sometimes called a single shot assumption. We have uh, different types of thermodynamic potentials. So one is the Rennie zero entropy, this is a the zero limit of the Rainy entropies, and the other is the Rainy infinity entropy given by this. So these are definitions, but I will not go into the details of this uh, mathematical aspect. But important point is that we have different thermodynamic potentials from here to here and here to here. 
So for example, if we start from the give state and we invest the work and we create some non-equilibrium state, then the work cost is uh, bounded from below by the um, infinity Brownian entropy. On the other hand, if we start from non-equilibrium state and we extract the work and we end up with the given state, then the extractable work is bounded uh, from above by the rainy zero entropy. So <laughs> under this single shot assumption, the second row is given by these two different thermodynamic potentials in this way and the other way. So Takahiro, may I interrupt you? Uh, so why do you call this entropy infinite? Oh, yeah. So these are, uh, this is a limit of uh, Rennie entropy, Rennie alpha entropy. So we have uh, infinite uh, family of Rennie entropies. Okay. And so Rennie Rennie one, Rennie. Yeah. No, and no. Rennie one entropy is just a quantum relative entropy. And this is an infinite limit. And this is a zero. Okay, thank you. Okay, so then, okay, so we have two different entropies here. So, and my, okay, and my focus is that this is fundamentally different scenario from the conventional equilibrium thermodynamics, because in conventional thermodynamics, we have uh, the concept of, of reversibility. So this is a very important uh, concept in equilibrium thermodynamics. For example, starting from equilibrium state one, then we can extract the work uh, that is given by the difference of these two equilibrium states. And in the other way, so we have the same amount of extractable work that is given by the free energy difference again. So we have to always have the same um, free energy difference here and here. So this ensures that we have a we can make a reversible cycle starting from here and end up here. So and the equality is always achievable if we take the quasi static limit, very slow limit, where the work cost exactly cancel in this cycle. So this is corresponding to the statement, the basic statement of the second row of some dynamics that we cannot extract any positive amount of work, of work from a cycle without remaining any effect on the outside world. So this is uh, the um, reason why the reversibility is very important because it, it, it is directly related to the secondary statement. <laughs> and in other words, so this kind of reversibility implies that state of conversion, conversion is completely characterized by a single thermodynamic potential that is equilibrium free state F. So this is very different from the resource theoretic uh, situation because we have different entropies in this way and in this way. And S0 and S infinity do not match in general. So even if we just make a cycle here, we always need a positive amount of work that is given by S infinity minus S zero. So in this sense, the reversibility is not ensured in the resource theoretic thermodynamics at small scale. So in other words, any single complete thermodynamic potential uh, does not exist here, uh, except for a special case that both of these states are given by given states. Okay, so then, in this sense, we can see that in small scale thermodynamics and single shot thermodynamics, we don't have any single thermodynamic potential like the KL divergence or equilibrium free energy. So, but we still want to have some simple characterization by a single thermodynamic potential between uh, about the state conversion between two states. So our question is, is it still possible to have a single thermodynamic potential if something that completely characterizes state compatibility in out of equilibrium and fully quantum situations? Of course, as I mentioned, in general, the answer is negative, but in some uh, physical, natural, and broad situations, we still have this kind of thermodynamic potential. So this is our 
uh, main results uh, of this talk. So we have two scenarios to get this kind of thermodynamic potential. So one is uh, to take asymptotic, I mean, macroscopic limit. Uh, and if the state is spatially ergodic, I, I will explain about this concept later. And Hamiltonian is local and trans translation invariant. So this is the subject of part one. And the other scenario is that if we consider the a catalyst, that, that is a kind of special catalyst called correlated catalyst, um, then uh, we have, uh, again, the single thermodynamic potential. And in both cases, the thermodynamic potential is given by the KL divergence. So we have a very natural, we can recover our natural thermodynamics uh, from the resource theoretic point of view. So this is the main uh, result of this talk. Uh, and the both, in the both cases, the thermodynamic potential is given by the KL divergence. Okay, so then I will go to our main results. Okay, the first part is about the many body system. So this is a collaborating work with these people. So this is a photo in 2018 when I visited Caltech for a short sabbatical. So this work is mainly done with me and Philip Feist. And I visited Fernand Brandau's group at this time. And this is published in this short paper and very recently in this long paper. Okay, so and this is an informal statement of our result. So we have proved the existence of a thermodynamic potential that completely characterizes state compatibility of a broad class of interacting quantum many body systems with some physically reasonable assumptions, including ergodicity, even for out of equilibrium and fully quantum situations. And, and our main method is quantum hypothesis testing, so uh, which I, I will explain later. Okay, so in more detail, our main assumption is the ergodicity. So in statistical physics, usually ergodicity is about it's a kind of temporal con concept. I mean, usually we formulate ergodicity at, by a statement, something like that. So the time average equals ensemble average. But in this case, the, we focus on spatial ergodicity. So this implies that the spatial average equals the ensemble average. So this is a slightly different from the yeah, standard ergodicity concept. And the physical meaning of this definition is that the fluctuation of any macroscopic I mean, extensive, extensive observer like the total magnetization vanishes in the macroscopic limit. So in other words, any macroscopic observer has a definite, definite value without any phase coexistence. So for example, even if the system is out of equilibrium, we have a situation that the macroscopic observer like the total magnetization does not have any macroscopic fluctuations. So in that sense, this special ergodicity is a much broader concept than thermal equilibrium. So we can include many uh, non equilibrium situations under this assumption. <laughs> For example, uh, it is known that a uh, given state without any phase coexistence satisfies the special ergodicity. And the other assumption is that the Hamiltonian is local and translation invariant, uh, and that has some given state. Rosy. So we don't have any disorder or and the interaction is just local. We don't have any long range interaction. And I'd like to emphasize that in our theory, the spatial dimension can be arbitrary. So it is not restricted to one dimension or two dimensions or something like that. And then what we have mathematically proved is that uh, under the proper definition of the asymptotic limit of entropies that is called information spectrum. Uh, and under these assumptions, the so zero entropy and infinite entropy both equal the KL divergence. So this means that, again, we remind this. So in this case, zero entropy and infinite entropy characterize these two different uh, directions. And, but we can prove that in 
On the some assumptions, like uh, Rodisti and Broker and translation invariant Hamiltonian, these uh, ent entropies are both equivalent to the KL divergence. So in that sense, uh, we can recover the single sum dynamic potential uh, from these assumptions. So this is our first main result. Okay, and based on this <laughs> result, we can prove that the work is always greater than the free energy difference that is defined based on the KL divergence. And important point is that we have is a complete characterization of is the state of compatibility in this case. So otherwise, we have the if and only if statement uh, for the work investment and the free energy difference. So in this sense, we can say that uh, a single sum dynamic potential emerges uh, under these assumptions, and that can completely characterize the state of compatibility of uh, quantum many body systems. So this is a kind of informal statement of our main result. Okay, and actually this, the proof of this result is requires a very complicated, complicated mathematics and something like this. And our long paper is 62 pages and maybe we need 40 page proof for this. But I will just briefly show the basic concept in on some mathematical details in just maybe five minutes or something like that. Okay, so first we need to define the asymptotic limit of this infinite and zero entropies. So it is not trivial how to take the asymptotic limit of these entropies because when you infinite entropy and when you zero entropy are both very singular concept. So it it, it, it is known that just the n infinity limit doesn't work here. And instead, we need some smoothing first. It is called smooth divergences. So and we first make some smoothing by using a parameter epsilon, and then take the uh, limit of n. This is, uh, rigorously speaking, this is given by a uh, limit sub and limit inf. And then finally, we take the smoothing zero limit. By using this, uh, we have it's a proper asymptotic limit of these entropies, and these are called information spectrum. So this was first introduced in Nagaoka and Hayashi in the context of uh, quantum hypothesis testing, and later that and Rena and Wolf uh, introduced uh, reformulated this concept by using smooth entropies. So this is very complicated, but important point is that we need some smoothing before we take some dynamic limit. Okay, and, and also we can show that this kind of smoothing has a physical meaning. For example, uh, we can show that uh, this kind of limit is consistent with the state conversion uh, given by this. This is, means that the state conversion can be approximated uh, in the sum dynamic limit like this, but the given state should be conserved exactly. So this is a kind of sum dynamic natural assumption because maybe the given state is always conserved exactly in sum dynamics, but uh, for non-equilibrium state, we can make some approximation to uh, get a desired state. And maybe we skip this. And what we actually proved is that the, this lower entropy, this is the limit of the zero entropy, and this upper entropy, this is the limit of uh, the infinity entropy, both equal to the uh, K divergence rate. This is given by, just given by the uh, limit of the K L divergence, because the K divergence is not so singular, singular concept. Okay, and um, also let me briefly mention that this is very closely related quantum hypothesis testing. So the quantum hypothesis testing is a very different, uh, apparently very different from sum dynamics, but uh, it is known that when it's zero entropy and when it's infinity entropy are both very closely related to some particular limits of quantum hypothesis testing. So the quantum hypothesis testing is kind of task to distinguish two quantum states, for example, rho and sigma, with sigma being called 
the uh, null hypothesis and we minimize the error probability of the second kind given by this by keeping the success probability uh, by constant it. So from this, we can define the hypothesis testing, like uh, hypothesis testing divergence like this. And uh, we can show that uh, the Rennie zero entropy is close to the hypothesis divergence for eta equals one, and Rennie infinity entropy is close to the hypothesis testing divergence for eta equals zero. So in under this correspondence, uh, we can show uh, that our statement like this is equivalent to so-called the quantum Stein's lemma. That is a very, I think, the most important lemma in quantum hypothesis testing. So that implies that the large deviation property. So this is actually the large deviation property of the error probability because the uh, care divergence rate. Right? Okay, so <laughs> what I wanted to show here is that essentially or mathematically, what we proved is a quantum, uh, quantum Stein's lemma for quantum hypothesis testing for interacting quantum many bodies, quantum many body systems. Actually, there is a long history about quantum Stein's lemma or quantum ergodic theory. So the classical case was already established in 1988, and you can find uh, something in the textbook of Cabot Thomas. Um, but uh, the quantum case is much more complicated, and uh, it was proved for the IID, I mean, the identity and identically distributed, uh, independent and identically distributed case was proved in 2000. And later, no interacting many body case was proved in this paper, and we proved the interacting case here. So, so in this sense, in the context of quantum information theory, what we proved is that a generalization of uh, quantum Stein's lemma for hypothesis testing for interacting and truly many body situation. So this is uh, the mathematical uh, background of this, or quantum background, or quantum information theoretic background of this result. Okay, anyway, so this is a summary of part one. So we have proved the existence of a complete thermodynamic potential uh, for a broad class of quantum spin systems out of equilibrium. And uh, our state is spatially ergodic and Hamiltonian's local and translation invariant. And our proofs, proof works in any spatial dimension. And our proof is based on the concept of, of information of spectrum. And our statement is equivalent to a generalized quantum Stein's game uh, beyond the identical and independently distributed situation. And I think this work is kind of a way to, towards a resource theory interacting uh, many body systems beyond the IID stage. And we have some open issues. So one important open problem, what does resource theory tell about ergodicity breaking, breaking case like many body localization or spin glass systems? Because our work is and heavily based on the assumption of ergodicity. And I'm interested in what I'm interested in um, the problem of ergodicity breaking systems. Okay, so this is part one. And if you have any, you don't have any questions, I will go to the second part. Well, um, I, I may ask a question. Uh, yeah. uh, is there an easy way from a physical point of view to understand how the range entropy enters into, you know, the fluctuation and relaxation processes? Why, why they are different? Yeah, so that's an important problem. And mm -hmm. in general, it is not is it to intuitively or physically explain why this entropy is sharp? But one explanation of, for example, Rennie zero entropy is that Rennie zero entropy is, is a kind of the, how to say, it's basically the size of the support of the, this, this P rho is a projection to the support of density of beta rho. So in the classical case, this is 
just a projection to the non-zero component of the probability distribution P. So in that sense, this is a kind of the work, worst case estimation of work extraction. I mean, so we need the assumption of the single shot scenario. So we don't allow any fluctuation in the work extraction process. So to exclude uh, the fluctuations, maybe we should cut off some probabilities that have some fluctuations and we just focus on some non-fluctuating part. So that kind of operation is corresponding to the definition of this, I mean, the take the support of the state. So it, it's still abstract. So maybe in this paper, he constructed an ex, explicit protocol to extract the rainy zero entropy. It, it is kind of the cutoff of some unnecessary component and we focus on some non fluctuating part. So that is consistent with the projection to the support of the system. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't see more questions. No. So, any other questions? Okay, so let me go to the second part. That, that is, we, we have a kind of same spirit as the first part, but Next, we will focus on a small scale, small scale sum dynamics. But instead, we introduce a concept of catalyst. So this is a collaborating work with now Toshiaji in Gakushu University. Okay, so what is catalyst? So we have the system here, and we want to convert the system into from row to row prime. And if we in, introduce the catalyst C, we Suppose that the state of the catalyst does not change before and after the operation, but the catalyst can interact with the system. So by allowing this, uh, allowing the presence of the catalyst, the class of possible state conversion is actually extended. So we can do more. We can do more if we introduce the catalyst. And also, there is a certain motivation uh, to introduce catalyst because. Uh, in conventional term dynamics, conceptually, we can always attach this kind of additional system, but only uh, because only requirement for conventional term dynamics is that uh, we doesn't remind any effect on the outside world. And the catalyst doesn't change. So this kind of uh, additional system is always allowed in conventional term dynamics, I think. So that is the thermodynamic uh, motivation to introduce catalyst. Also in quantum information context, like the entanglement, distillation, or something like that, also the catalyst is very useful uh, to manipulate quantum systems. Okay, so there are several uh, important results uh, about catalyst, catalyst, and one uh, result is the case of the exact, uh, exact catalyst. So in this case, we don't, Allow any error in the state conversion of the catalyst and C and this C and this C should be always the same. And in the classical case, the necessary and sufficient condition for this kind of catalytic state conversion is uh, given by the family of uh, infinite family of Rennie entropies. So we have even negative alpha Rennie entropy here, and the necessary and, the necessary and sufficient condition is given by the family of this all of Rainy divergences. So this is still complicated, and we we have infinite. We need infinite entropies, so rather than two entropies or single entropy. So this was established in these papers, um, and yeah, by introducing catalyst, some dynamics, quantum some dynamics is still complicated. On the other hand, the opposite limit is that. Uh, if we allow a finite but arbitrarily small error in the catalytic state, we, I mean, if this C and this C prime uh, can be changed very uh, slightly, then 
uh, we can show that any states row and row prime become convertible with each other. So this is a very strong statement. And in this case, if we allow the error in the catalytic state conversion, then the resource theory becomes trivial because any state conversion is any state conversion is allowed, and there is no second row at all. So this is the opposite limit and maybe non-interesting limit. So this is called the embezzling phenomenon found in this paper in 2003. And yes, maybe we have some question. Uh, hello. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, uh, so can this catalyst exchange some energy with the system or no? Oh, yeah. This catalyst doesn't have energy, basically. I mean, the initial energy and final energy should be the same, and the Hamiltonian are the same. So, this catalyst doesn't assist any energetic change. Uh, but the coupling mm -hmm. with the system, yeah. uh, so you're coupling with the system and then decoupling it, right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. but uh, I mean, that can, there can be some energy cost to doing this, right? Yeah. In some sense, we need to switch some interaction Hamiltonian between this initial and final states. But yeah, but that eventually, can... yeah. Eventually, we have the same states in the initial and final stages. So, but there can, can be some uh, like this. Uh, uh, there can be some. Uh, like the the coupling this is the the coupling hamiltonian is changing right during this process and so that can exactly, lead yeah. to some energy cost yeah we need some energy cost if we stop the process at some point intermediately but eventually we don't need energy cost because the initial and final states are the same so any energetic cost are cancelled during that process okay yeah thanks Yeah, so in this setup, we have two opposite limits. One, in one limit, we have very complicated infinity entropies. And in the other limit, everything is trivial. So we want to focus on the intermediate region between these two extreme limits. And we found that in the intermediate, intermediate region, another non-trivial and simple characterization of state convertibility um, emerges. So th this is uh, the main, our main result of the second part. Okay, so and what we introduce is the correlation between the catalyst and the system in the final stage. So this is a very, this looks like a very small modification, but the situation drastic, drastically changes by introducing this correlation. And I would like to emphasize that this correlation can be very small, after small, and only by allowing is infinitely small, even infinitely small correlation between the system and the catalyst. And we again have a single thermodynamic potential that is given by the KL divergence. So this was conjectured in these papers in yeah maybe five years ago or three years ago. And yeah, the classical case was proved in this PRX paper in 2018 by Mira. And uh, we proved this conjecture in for the quantum case. And this was this is our yeah, paper published last year. So and we have used a completely different method for the proof uh, from the classical case. In that sense, our proof is not uh, just an extension of the classical case, but we in some sense we found a completely different proof even for the quantum, a classical case, because our quantum proof is very different. Okay, so this is a formal statement of our main result. So we allow the final correlation here, and but the marginal state C is the same as the initial state. Then the state conversion from row to row prime is possible if and only if the free energy based on the K divergence decreases. So this is the characterization of the correlated uh, uh, catalytic state conversion. And uh, I don't go to go into the detail of uh, the proof of this statement, but let me just 
mention the basic idea. So idea of the proof is again the quantum Stein's theorem that I mentioned in the first part. So the quantum Stein's theorem is for a large scale quantum system, quantum many body system, but we now have a small system row here. But the important point is that this catalyst can be a very large system. So this catalyst can be a many body system. So we can apply the quantum Stein's theorem for this catalyst system. And we and we use some trick, mathematical trick, and then we can apply a kind of result of the part one. And then we find that uh, the state compatibility from row to row prime is characterized by, given by the care divergence. So in that sense, the first part and uh, the first part and the second part are not completely independent, but yeah, they're closely related through the fact that catalyst can be a mini body system. Okay, so we, we can also generalize our result to the case that we have some work investment to the system. And again, we have the necessary and sufficient condition for the state conversion, uh, even if we need some positive amount of work to, to convert the state. Okay, so this is a summary of part two. So there was a conjecture that the catalytic, created catalytic state conversion is character characterized by a single summary potential given by the k divergence. And we proved the quantum case. And our proof is based on the asymptotic theory, especially the quantum Stein theorem for the quantum hypothesis testing, because the catalyst can be very huge. And our result is also applicable to more general state conversion from the pair of rho and sigma to rho prime and rho s sigma prime. And also applies to uh, various resource theories other than some dynamic resource theory where the k divergence uh, also emerges. So in that sense, our result is, uh, is not only for some dynamics, but also for general resource theories where catalyst, a correlated catalyst is allowed. Okay, let me finally discuss some physical or conceptual aspect of our result. So why resource theory, first, why resource theory is important in some dynamics? One answer is that a mathematically clear and universal framework to characterize state compatibility. So this is a kind of different approach uh, from uh, stochastic some dynamics. And also maybe philosophically, some dynamics is a kind of resource theory from the beginning because we have complete characterization of state compatibility in even in conventional some dynamics. And another point is why the k divergence always emerges. So the, maybe the answer is the proper divergence in the asymptotic limit is the k divergence. In the single shot, I mean the small scale case, we have several exotic entropies like the Rainy zero and infinity entropy or even negative Rainy entropy. But by taking the asymptotic limit, we always recover the care divergence. So this is the reason why we always have the care divergence for uh, uh, dynamic systems. And also ergodicity is a key for the emergence of it. And quantum ergodic theorem is almost equivalent to the quantum Stein for hypothesis testing. And why the final point is why we need to care about catalyst. And, and catalyst enriches state compatibility, and catalyst can be huge. So the asymptotic theory is again relevant to this case. And some dynamics allows catalyst from the beginning, uh, conceptually, in terms of yeah, conventional some dynamics. Okay, so this is a summary of my talk. Um, this is the end of my presentation. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Kiro, for the talk. Thank you very much. Um, okay, um, let's uh, start with some uh, uh, questions. Please, uh, Felipe. Yes, hello. Um, I have a question related to this. Uh, uh, Irreversibility in the small case in the small for small system. Yeah. The can the unitary or the process change the Hamiltonian of the system? Uh, yes, exactly. Like so there, for we, instance. Yeah, we suppose that any interpretation is 
allowed as long as it satisfies this thumbnail constraint. So we can switch mm -hmm. the intermediate step as long as we uh, these assumptions are satisfied. So yeah, so th then my question is, if I imagine that I go from a raw to a raw prime, which is still equilibrium, like uh, e to the minus beta, but with a different Hamiltonian. Yeah. Uh, then in that case, would it be still irreversible, the process? Uh, in that case, the reversibility is recovered because okay. if both of row and row prime are both give states, and then it is it can be shown that S0 and S infinity are both equivalent to the KL divergence again. So in that case, only in the equilibrium transition between give state and another give state, we have we can recover the reversibility. So in okay, that so sense, even if the Hamiltonian are different. Exactly right. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Carlos, you're mute. Oh yeah. Sorry, I was talking to myself. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, please, Gonzalo. Hi, thank you for the talk, uh, Takairo. I have a question regarding the, the, um, the catalytic uh, part. So do, do you need any condition, any specific condition on the, on the uh, catalytic uh, systems that you, that you use? Oh, okay. In terms of uh, dimension or something or? Yeah. Actually, we don't have any specific condition about the catalyst state. I think only requirement is that catalyst is just a finite dimensional system, but it can be very huge, huge and finite. So in other words, catalyst can be very freely chosen. chosen. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So then uh, if I understood well, you so using this uh, general catalyst and uh, some other uh, system that uh, that has uh, let's say some energy you can mimic a, a driving like a like the one you will have with a time dependent hamiltonian right uh yes it, it is called i think clock degree of freedom maybe exactly. it's a kind of driving system to implement a time dependent hamiltonian is that i see, I see. yeah so that's at the end you, you can get this right with the so this is what the catalyst uh, allows you know to yeah, yeah. Life to but, achieve this no yeah but i think there is a subtle problem so if we implement the clock expressly i think it cannot be catalyst i mean catalyst should be the same in the initial and the final state but clock should move from yeah. one point to another point. So in some case, a, a clock can't be a catalyst. So I think yeah, yeah. there's that conceptual difference between them. Yeah, you, you probably need both, right? Both yeah. The catalyst yeah, right. and the other, yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Gonzalo. It seems Felipe has uh, one more question. Yeah, if there is nobody else. Uh... Yeah, my, my, I wanted to ask you about the uh, sigma hat and p hat this, uh, for in the last part of the first part. Yeah. So when you say that these are no uh, IID, uh, this is not the IID case. Yeah. Um, so this I have to understand as the state of the Composite side, a system that is growing in the thermodynamic limit? Uh, exactly, yeah. We always assume that the system size is growing uh, by taking the limit, but we don't assume that they are product state. Okay. So, yeah. So this N is, N is the size of a lattice. So we always consider lattice system like like this, and the number of lattice sites is given by in, in this case. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 
Um, are there more questions? Well, if not, um, uh, let's uh, thank uh, Takahiro again. Thanks a lot for your, uh, for your nice talk. Thank you very much.